So we're going to have a discussion about um, vital process number four, which is developing independent leaders. But we're going to bring in this concept of tough love and really having the, the tough conversations with your team. So let's, let's talk first, though, guys. Um, what does it mean to build independent leaders? Go ahead, Chris. You know, it, what it means is, is um, finding out what their vision is and what it is that they want to do, and then providing the tools to them, or even just pointing them in the direction of the tools, and letting them see that it's a step-by-step -step process. It's not just me holding their hand the whole time. Um, I'm there to help them, but I'm not there to do the work for them. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's mentoring and helping your coaches, but it's that moment where they then can fly and do it on their own and don't have to come to you for everything and rely on everything and they have their own thing that they have going on. Okay, so how do you develop that? Like, how does that happen within your guys' businesses? Um, I am like the queen of simplicity, so I keep my business and everything I do as simple as possible so that it's duplicatable. Um, I think that's been a big thing with my with my coaches, um, is that everything we do, they're able to plug in, they're able to do their own thing on their terms and still be the leader of their team. Um, but ultimately, I mean, you just, you everyone in here knows there's going to be coaches that no matter what you give them are going to do it, and there's going to be coaches that no matter what, they're, what you give them, they're not. So I don't, so, don't feel like if you don't have these coaches yet, it's your problem because it might not be, you just might not have the right people yet. So something to think about too. Sure, sure. So Liz, let's jump into, um, so going back, you know, how did you become a leader that builds independent leaders? I know for me, it was something I really, I had to grow into. This wasn't something that I came into the business knowing how to do. And I had a great example in my leaders and um, my upline, but it was almost like a decision that I had to make when I saw that I was enabling a culture of dependence. I was the coach that would pick up the phone, you know, Wednesday night at 11 p.m when I'm laying in bed next to my husband about to go to sleep because one of my coaches is gonna lose rank this week. And I had to get to that point, and I think having my first baby helped, of I can't function like this anymore, and I'm, I'm developing this culture where my coaches can't do anything on their own. So it was setting a precedent within our team and saying, hey guys, I, I didn't do this right. I didn't do you guys any favors. And some coaches kind of felt like I was pulling the rug out from under them, but I really saw my potential leaders and my leaders step up and start to thrive when I took a step back and said, this is our new process. You know, we're gonna be on top of our online office much earlier in the week. You're not, I'm not gonna pick up a call on Wednesday night anymore. Mm. And they started doing it on their own and really started to grow. Uh, you, you, have to, you have to, maybe for a lot of us, you have to put ego to the side too because independent leaders is really, in the end, what we want. For the longest time, you know, everything fell under my, my team umbrella, and I was really proud about that. And when people started to leave and, like, form their own team pages, I was like, what's wrong with my team? You know, why, why, why do you need to leave my team? But that's what really started to make my business grow exponentially, too, when these people were able to basically build their own nest, right, and bring their own people in and let them grow up and, and, and they go on and on and on. And that's when it starts to really grow at an exponential level. Instead of just trying to keep everything in house underneath, you know, me and mine and let them let them really grow into independent leaders. Okay. So Liz, you brought up the word culture. How does how does culture maybe Mike that you could answer this? You've got a an awesome team of great leaders that are building independently. How did you get that culture in your organization? Hmm. Um, I think, I mean, geez, that's more of a, how did I get, that was not on the script. <laughs> how did I get that? I think, also, I think it came down to, we really, truly cared about each other. Yeah. First and foremost, we love being together. We love, I mean, it is like, we're a bunch of moms, lots of us, we're a bunch of like, it is our adult, like, communication, you know? So we, we've come together as like, friends, great friends, and that has 
where it's just where it all evolves because we're there because we want to be there and the business is kind of the side part like oh and we get to do this too like this is really cool we get to hang out with people we love so i think that's where our culture came from is just really locking arms with people that i truly love and care about and want to see succeed and then i i mean i'll do anything i can to help them be successful in their own businesses i think can i add to that yeah. so uh, on that topic of love, something my buddy Cam Carver said to me backstage when we were kind of talking through some stuff, he was saying, in tough love, that love has to be there in order for the tough love, <clears throat> excuse me, for the tough love to, to work. That connection has to be there. So we kind of have to come back to basics and say, before we can just lay it out there and say what we're thinking as leaders to our coaches who might be wavering or the excuses are coming in, we have to make sure that we're kind of switching it from tough love to love tough. You know, you're coming at them from this place of, hey, I remember what you told me you wanted. I remember feeling that fire inside for you. I have that connection with you. Let's make sure that we're I'm meeting you where you're at and I'm helping you work through your struggle and I'm loving you through this, but I'm giving you a dose of reality too. That's my role as a leader and that's what I promised I would do for you. Okay, cool. So Chris, why don't we have, from your perspective, what is tough love? How does that work in your organization? You know, tough love for me is, is just being very real with people. I'm a pretty candid person. Those of you who know me might know that. But, you know, so if somebody tells me when I'm like, hey, did you make success club? Um, and they're like, well, no, you know, because my, my cousin, they didn't do this. Or, or, you know, my friend said they were going to do this and, and they didn't do that. And I'm like, well, it's funny because it's not their responsibility to make successful. You're pointing to other people saying this is why you didn't make successful. That's, it's not their responsibility. It's your responsibility. You didn't talk to enough people. That's simply it. And then they always are like, oh, we don't understand. You know, I have so many kids, I have so many other obligations, I have this and this and this. And then really I'm like, okay, well, you know what? That's okay. Not everybody has what it takes to be a successful beach buddy coach. And maybe that's the one you fit into. Because the 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 parameters for what makes a successful what it takes to be a successful beach buddy coach, they don't change based on how many kids you have, how many jobs you have, how many whatever else you have. The parameters are the same for everybody. You know, there's just what what level of sacrifice are you willing to reach and, and put yourself through to reach that level? Because the level is constant for everybody in this room. The reason that Melissa McAllister is is more successful than me is because she works harder than me. You know, I understand that. <laughs> it's, 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 the, the, the bar is the same for everyone. So in your guys' business, you and Cody, is it does Cody have tough love conversations or do you do all so hard living with your downline? <laughs> it's so hard living with your downline. And she would tell you it's hard living with your upline too. I mean, you know, man, that's a that really wasn't on the screen. You know, I mean it's 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 just two different things. I mean we really love what we do. Um yeah, I believe it's there. Um, <laughs> sure. Okay. So Micah, how does how does tough love happen in your organization? Um, I I shoot it straight. My coaches that are here will, will agree to that, I'm sure. But I just um, I definitely believe in them before they do lots of times, and so I'm not afraid to say, look, like like I said, you told me you wanted this, and you're not your actions aren't aligning with your goals. So let's rehash some things. If you want this, you need to do this, plain and simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And so we have those real talks and those conversations. And like the other day, I went in, because I'm at a place where I, I can give tough love to my leaders because they know that I love them and have that relationship with them. But I, I don't as much with my new coaches. But then it was coming across kind of through the grapevine that I didn't love them as much as I loved my leaders and whatever. And I was like, dude, that is not it. So I went into my team page um, and went live. And my person called my team page and just said, look, you guys, this is what it is. I love every single one of you for wherever you're at. Because I will support you where you're at. If you're here for the discount, I love you for that. If you're here for this, I love you for that. But this is what it looks like to reach your goal. And I just kind of laid it there and left it on them. And I said, I have a large team. I love you all the same, but my time you know, can't be spent evenly with each of you. So if you want my time, reach out. If you want this, I'm here for you. But I can't personal message every single one of you every week 
and drag you along and ask you how you're doing and ask you why you're not showing up and ask you why you're not doing the training. And so it's just, I think being on the same page and setting those expectations and helping them understand where I'm coming from also, because I do love them and want to see them have success, whether that's in the challenge group, getting the discount, rocking the business, being in the week 10, like whatever it is. So just getting care, setting expectations, and then just having that clear communication there on the same page. Okay, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about how you determine what level of tough love you're gonna to deliver to those members of your team. I mean, obviously, some you do have better relationships with, some have been around a little bit longer. What does that look like in your guys' business? I, I think for me, I had this fear of rocking the boat. I would have coaches that were just acting like discount coaches, but saying they wanted to advance their business, but I was like, ah, I don't wanna call them out on it because at least they're a discount coach and they're still getting their Shakeology and they're helping people maintain rank. And so it was this fear of, I don't wanna be real with them because if I rock the boat, what if they say, well, never mind, I'm just gonna cancel. But then you get to this place where you have to get to know each individual on your team. It's a tough thing, it's a time consuming thing, but it's time and credit because when you have that connection with everyone from your discount coaches all the way up to the people who say, you know, I wanna be the next top coach in this company, you can gauge how you can push them. And I think an important piece for me was asking them for permission, saying right from the get-go, hey, what do you want from me? Like, can I be real with you? How do you react to tough love? Because I have some coaches that I have to kind of change what that looks like because they will literally curl up and ball and die if I say, why aren't you, you know, doing what you said you want to do? So I have to learn to phrase it a little bit more gently, like, you're doing great, but don't you think you could do a little better based on what you said you were working for? Let's figure out what that looks like. So really developing that connection with each individual so that you can guide them according to what they need. It's, yeah, it's time consuming, but it's kind of what we sign up for as leaders. Okay, so what, so talk a little bit about expectation. How do you set an expectation with your team beforehand so that they know kind of where they're at and how you guys are going to work with them? Well, you know, I, I talk to people, I, I, in the beginning, you know, I ask them, I'm like, hey, you know what, people tend to disappear. Sometimes they disappear. How many days do you want me to let you be absent for before I reach out to you? Uh, you know, what is, it that, what is it that you want from me? And you know, one of the things that Arno uh, gave to me a long time ago, which I love, is, is just really asking in the beginning, do I have your permission to hold you accountable? And then, boy, that's when they know the hammer's coming, because I'm like, hey, remember when you told me you gave me permission to hold you accountable and be candid with you? Well, here it comes. And, and, then, and then we have that conversation. But I, 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 you know, I let people tell me what it is that they want, and, and then, you know, I, I offer what it is that they're gonna need to do to get there. Because, you know, some people be like, I wanna make $1,000 a week by, in three months, and I've got a good solid 90 minutes a week to put into this. And I'm like, well, <laughs> those numbers are gonna have to change one way or the other, they're gonna have to change. Okay, so what advice, I mean, there's, there's people in this audience that probably need to have some tough love conversations. What advice would you give them? You have to you have to be bold. I was just talking to, I guess corporate thinks I need a lot of pep talks. I was also talking to Jeff Hill, and he's like, when you're out there, don't be a wilting lily. Be bold. <laughs> so I think that applies to both this, but also in, as as leaders, we we have that label as leaders, but are we actually leading? And you can't be afraid. We're doing our coaches a disservice if we tiptoe around trying to guide them. And sometimes that's, you know, you don't have to be mean about it. You always want to lead with that love, but it's understand that you have to have those checkpoints and those reality checkpoints is what we call them on our team, where we actually, like, every so often, I post to my team, here's a checklist of all the things that you need to be doing to get to where you said you want to go. Are you doing them or not? And letting go of that fear of rocking the boat, know that some people will quit, they were probably gonna quit anyway, but it's our job to connect and present the truth and give that reality checkpoint so that they know, am I on the right path or not? So, you know, for me it would be, 
don't get later. I mean, you know, in fact, if I can be very candid, which I am, is, you know, like, we're sitting here as, as five stars and we're, we're at leadership, and you guys know that there's people that are diamonds or they're emeralds or they're just, you know, failed coaches, and they're like, well, yeah, if I have this, I could be in Coronado too. Yeah. And, you know, and we're all like, oh, why are you such a hater? But then some of us turn around and we look at the top 10 coaches or something like that, and we're like, oh, well, if I had that, I could be a top 10 coach too. And the fact is, men can't, you don't do the work. You know, so you do the work that these people do to get top 10, and you can do it. You don't, you can't criticize somebody for hating you for the level that you're at and then turn around and hate somebody for the level that they're at when it's exactly the same thing. And that's talking in this room, not like, baby. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Micah, what advice would you give to this room? Well, that's the original question. The original question was, there's people here who probably need to have tough love conversations with their team. What would you advise them? I'll tell them what I did before when I was afraid to give tough love. And okay. this helped me ease into it. Um, early on, I was really afraid that my coaches would think that I was giving them tough love because um, I was mad at them or because... Like for instance, say someone is gonna lose rank, or say someone is gonna, they're not showing up when, when they said they wanted to. Well, I was afraid that they would think I was giving them tough love because I needed them to rank advance because I needed to rank advance or whatever. So I'm like, I don't ever want them to feel like I need them or I'm mad at them or whatever. So as soon as I came to a place where I knew that I wasn't dependent on anyone, I didn't need anyone, I didn't need, like I would find the people who wanted to run and they would jump on my train and I wasn't dependent on them, then I wasn't afraid to lose them. And so that helped my mentality. And then um, I introduced it by sh like sharing videos from other leaders who were giving tough love. And then my, my coaches were like, oh my gosh, I love that, fire me up. And I'm like, dude, what the crap? If I said that, you would have been crying or you would have been quitting or whatever. But then I knew that they liked that kind of stuff and they needed that. They, need, they didn't just need the, look at you, you can do it. They needed like the, come on, you guys, you said you wanted this, now let's do this, and here we go, and blah, blah. And so then it helped me be brave and create my own types of stuff. And then that was easier to work into, and that, it's just kind of part of my jam. Okay, yeah. perfect. So let's, let's we're, we're getting low on time here. Let's. Can each of you share a time when you've had to show tough love on your team? And maybe give us an experience. Do you want to sure. start with So I warned her that I'd do this, but I have a coach here today, which means she's killing it. But at one point, she sent in her cancellation. This is back before cancellations were the first thing that each body made instantaneous in our <laughs> system. So I had a little time to catch it. And she was someone that I saw tremendous potential in me. <laughs> um, she was someone that, that I saw tremendous potential in. She was hitting success clubs. She was rank advancing. Um, and I knew that she was someone that was going to be a rock star, but that doubt had crept back in. So I messaged, she actually reminded me of this. I had kind of forgotten. I messaged her when I got that cancellation and I said, hey, I will support whatever you decide. I understand that this isn't always easy or quick, but remember that time you said you want to be home with your kids? And remember when you know you had these dreams of leaving that job that was soul-sucking to you? Like, you all of a sudden like your job? You all of a sudden not like your kids? Like, what's going on here? So we were able to have an honest conversation, and I let her know in the beginning, I'm not here to twist around, that's not what I do. I'm here to help you do whatever it is you want to do. And thankfully, she's here now, and she's crushing it, and she's doing awesome. But it was scary to me to have that conversation, but be, I knew that it was worth it, because if there's any chance that I can inspire this girl to take a chance on her dreams, I'm gonna do it, no matter what the end result might be. Awesome. Chris, so, you know, very quickly, because I know we're running out, but, so, you know, you guys know that I love, I love analogies, and, you know, the business, this, this business is the same for all of us, and, and some of you who may have heard me talk about you know, you're, we're all on the same highway, right? And so the people that work harder than me, they're in front of us on, on this particular highway. So when I start, signed up, uh, Jason Diebold had been in front of me for a couple of years, and I knew that the scenery that he was seeing, everything was the same. And, and so when 
that, that if, as long as I kept doing what I was doing at the same level that he was doing, I was going to be able to see the same things and design the same kind of life. And so that's what I tell people, and that's what I tell you guys who are new into this team or new into leadership, this is your first leadership. You sit here and you see all these other people doing things. This is your future, right? We have the ability to be clairvoyant in this. We know where you're going because this is the road only goes one way. It just depends on how fast it is that you're going. So when my people tell me this, I'm like, look, I know where you're going. You think you want my life. You say you want my life, and that's fine. My life is right down this highway. If you keep doing the work, you keep putting in the effort, and, and you're not sitting in a garage trying to build a car, reading the whole policy manual front to back, then you're going to get there. And like, there, there's two things. You're going to either succeed or you're going to take that exit to Shipsville, and you're going to go back around to where you came from, and you're going to be like, you know what, this is all right. I'm, I'm okay living here in this town. And, you know, and, and it's just very, like, I, this is where you're going, or you can exit that town that I said, and come back and sit there. Okay, Micah. <laughs> um, I think one of them in particular, I mean, I can also share one with one of my leaders that was here, that's here with us. She was supposed to be advancing to six star that morning, and there was a glitch in the system, so it wasn't updating. And so she was still reflecting whatever rank she was. And so she messaged me, voice messaged me, really upset about coach relations and, you know, just really, just a negative message, you know? And um, just pissed. And this, 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 and this is what happened to that. And I said, you know what? You can, you, I think you're wasting energy on this. All you need to do is hold for an extra week. You're like, if you can't get this fixed. And she's like, why are you this week? And I did this, and I'm like, you know what? If it was like five tough stars, like a big, this matters, like this is gonna like make or break like a big thing, then it would maybe be time, like worth the energy to get it fixed. I said, so you have two choices. You can either spend the time to get it fixed with coach relations, go back and forth and do whatever, or you can hold it for another week. So I wouldn't waste the energy, but you decide what you wanna do and then get it done. And she didn't message me back. And I was like, shoot, I hope I didn't piss her off, but talking to her today, she's like, I knew you were going to say that. I, I knew it was coming, but I just haven't been for a second, and I wanted to do it to you instead of to my coaches. And so I think that's healthy, that I, that my coaches know they can come to me with that stuff, but they also know what they're going to get back, and they know like what to expect from me. But that's kind of how it goes, and, and I'm thankful that we have a relationship where you can just be honest and straightforward, and you all say, oh, no, and just apologize, and then, and then I'm wasting energy, and then she's wasting energy, and it just is Mm -hmm. Just negative. So, all right. Well, let's give him a round of applause, guys. Thank you, Michael Bolson, Christine, Elizabeth.